Hey guys, Mike here. So this video is going to be about giving you some power troweling tips, especially for you new guys about how to power trowel concrete floors. You know, what goes into it, what kind of teamwork goes into it, and some things just to help you advance your skills and advance your knowledge. If you're new to this channel, my, my channel is all about concrete work, mostly flat work, stamp concrete, slabs, floors, patios, pool decks, all that kind of stuff, teaching you guys and helping you learn about concrete and also helping you guys grow a business. If you guys are looking to get in business for yourself, that my channel's about helping you to do that also. So what we do when we power trial concrete floors, I mean, there's a lot of timing involved. And what you gotta understand about the concrete is just how it cures, how it dries, especially in different environments. Like today's about a 75 degree day, nice and sunny out and the concrete that's in the sun is going to dry a, little, a lot faster or cure a lot faster than the parts that are in the shade so when it comes to power troweling you gotta you gotta understand that part the part of the floor here that's closest to you in the screen the, the corner there that's in the shade is actually where we first started pouring the concrete floor so that's not drying as fast as that part over there where i'm hitting it right now now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm calling, what we do is we call it floating the concrete. The first pass like this is uh, we call it floating. Now you guys out there that power trial a lot of concrete floors, you know, chime in here down in the comments and let these guys know your terminology too about what you call this. But our first pass we call it floating the concrete. And then the, the next pass is after this we call it hitting it with the finish blade, so finishing. So we have a float pass and then our finish passes. And when I float, when we float the concrete, there's a, there's a few different ways you can do it. We do it with these special blades called float blades that slide on over the finish blades on a power trial. Now you can have combo blades on a machine and the big machine right there, you see Luke, Luke's in the blue shirt. He's, he's running a four foot power trial that has combo blades on it. So with those type of blades, you can float the concrete and finish them without changing any blades on the machine. Um, and then there's one more way you can float concrete, and that's with a pan. And a pan is just a big round circular piece of metal kind of thing that goes under the power trowel, and the blades clip inside the pan, and then you can float the concrete with that pan, and then take the the power trial out of the pan after it's all floated and then start your finishing process so we just prefer the float blades it's the way we do it the most we've done it all three ways and we, we like the float blade part of it so as you can see I went around and I floated all the floor that was in the Sun first and I left the parts that were in the shade to dry a little bit more and now I'm coming back after I got all the Sun floated and I'm hitting the shady parts so we'll get that whole house floor floated and then what we're going to do is we're going to take that float machine I'm riding I'm driving and we're going to put it down on the garage part there so me and Darren are picking it up and that section back there is actually a garage it's about a 26 by 26 garage back there so that concrete's ready to float in the garage and Luke's Luke's on lay down now with the four foot power trowel using the combo blades so he's laying down all the floor that was in the shade that I just floated and getting that smoother and then he'll go down and on the shades part and start laying down the parts in the shade but he's gonna have to keep his eye on that part in the Sun because that's gonna dry twice as fast it's gonna cure twice as fast as the part in the shade so he's gonna have to hit that probably three or four times more than the part in the shade just to make sure it stays nice and smooth and then after he hits that part in the sun probably four times maybe maybe five times it's going to be done it's going to dry quite fast and he's not going to get much of a chance to rest in between times he hits it either he may need to go right back over where he started finishing you know when he gets done finishing down here at one corner he might have to go right back up to the other end and start hitting that again that's how dry that's how fast it dries in the sun so I got the, the garage all floated and then we took those float blades off the power trial. Then I'll just use that machine down on the garage and start the finishing process down there like what I'm doing right now with the lay down blades. And we, we usually finish in a pattern too. So we'll, 
you know, we have a certain pattern we use going back and forth. And then the next time we hit that section, we'll cross that pattern and go the other way. And that helps keep the floor flatter. If you keep continually going one way with a power trial or just, or just randomly drive it on the floor, you're going to create, you know, some dips and humps that you wouldn't normally get if you have a pattern you go by and then you cross that pattern 90 degrees the next time you go. Now what Luke's doing is he, he's working that shade part into the sun and fine tuning that little area. And now he's going back out in the sun and making sure that that didn't dry too fast. Every time you hit it, it gets smoother and smoother. As long as you don't wait too long, you'll be able to keep smoothing it out until you start seeing it, what we call shine out. It'll start to blacken up a bit right there. That pot loop just hit starting to blacken up a little bit. And we call that shining it out. You other guys, let me know what you call that when you're getting done and the, and the concrete's starting to have a sheen to it from the power trial. But so that one corner up there is done by the by the pickup trucks on the house. That part's done. And he'll keep feathering that down into the shade until the shade gets finished. You can see every time we hit the floor, we go around and do our edges. I got T and Abby. They have hand trials. They're going around doing edges, keeping the edges nice and smooth. It's one thing to have a really nice, good looking floor, but if your edges don't look good, then I mean that's a fir that's the first impression. The homeowner shows up. They see some crappy looking edges and the whole floor looks crappy after that. So it's important that you trial your edges each time you hit it to make sure your edges look nice and smooth also. So you can see this is this was a pretty big house and garage we did. I don't know, it was probably around 40 yards total. And it's pretty easy for two guys to run power trials to finish this if, if you got a lot of experience and you know how to handle the difference between the parts in the sun and the part in the shade. Also, you know, if you got good equipment too, you got to have good equipment, guys. And that's that's what we run Whiteman's and we run Marshall Towns. Hey guys, we're using a big Marshall Town today on this floor. We got a big house and garage. We're doing that four foot Marshall Town trial finished this whole house for all on its own and we had another trial down there that we did the garage with but we cover a lot of ground with this four footer Marshalltown makes a really good power trial guys I'd highly recommend them this one's got combo blades on it so you can use them for both uh, first pass and your finish pass we generally use finish blades and then throw blades but this one came with combos so we're trying it out they seem to work pretty good you can see Luke wears a special kind of shoes that way his sneakers don't leave a sneaker print it's a lot easier to get your footprints out with So Luke's going to finish that spot up. T is over there helping him do some edges. And there's a lot of good power trials out there, guys. I mean, MBW makes a really good power trial. There's, you just got to, you know, try one out. Maybe you could rent one, see the kind you like. And, you know, and then what you can do is when you add to your, once you buy one, you know, buy another one that's the same thing if you like it that way eventually you have all the same stuff and if you ever need parts you know you don't have to be searching for different parts for different companies typically that's what most people do so we're going to finish up that garage power trial on that putting the shine on it and then we're going to take that machine right off and you're going to get to see how we how we load these things in the truck here i highly recommend getting one of these if you guys have power trial See that crane. You can get that crane at Northern Pool. I think I have a link for it down in the description if you guys want to check it out. But I mean, there's no reason to continually pick these cows up by hand when they got something like that you can mount right on your truck. 
you can drop that thing down inside an 8-foot basement wall if you have that. But it just makes it a lot easier. All right, so once you get it power trialed, we are responsible when we get hired to saw expansion joints in our floor. So we like to saw them the same day. And we're using this Husqvarna Prowler X150. I've got three different types of what used to be soft cut saws, but Husqvarna bought out soft cut. So now they're, they're called Husqvarna's. But the guys love this saw. So we can get right on the concrete floor and saw the joints right after we get done power troweling. There's no waiting. Just the way this thing's designed with the skid plate on it, it doesn't ravel the edges, it gives you a nice clean saw cut. And then you're not having to go back the next day. So is it a lot of money? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think they're around the $2,500, $2,600, somewhere around there to buy. But I mean, if it saves you a trip from going back the next day, I mean, it pays for itself in no time. And you can see how early you can saw. I mean, Luke's still finishing up that one corner that was in the shade. And we're sawing cuts. I mean, that's how early you can saw this thing. The earlier you can saw your joints in, the more likely the slab is to crack in those joints. And it saws fast too. I mean, we measure it out, we snap our chalk lines, and then one guy sawing. And it cuts it cuts quite fast. So it probably took to cut this house and garage, it probably took you know a total of maybe 15 minutes or so to cut everything. Thanks guys. See you on the next one.